It be I, Captain Dave. I'm here to celebrate Talk Like a Pirate Day with ye. And before we start reading pirate books, I have a pirate joke. What do you call a pirate with two arms and two legs? Ah, he's just a beginner. He ain't lost no legs or arms yet. Now, the first book I have is Pirate Pete's Talk Like a Pirate. Pirate Pete had the most amazing ship to ever sail the high seas, but he needed a crew. Not any old crew would do, however. I need me a pirate crew, Pete told his parrot, and I know just where to find one, Rascal Island. To Rascal Island we go, cried the bird. Pete spun the wheel toward the sea of mischief and raced his speedy ship until it had reached Rascal Island. Pete dropped anchor in the bay and then hung a sign across the ship's bow, Buccaneers Wanted, and before long a boat filled with rascals rowed up to the ship. Pete rubbed his hands in glee. They were the dirtiest, most mischievous, and sneakiest looking scallywags and scurvy dogs he'd ever laid his eye on. One by one, the rascals climbed aboard the ship. Listen up, mates, announced the parrot. If you want to sail with Pete, then you've got to prove you've got what it takes. Pete nodded and declared, You need a peg leg and an old eye patch, a fierce looking hook and a beard you can scratch. You got to load a cannon and know how to fire it, but most of all, you got to talk like a pirate. A rascal stepped forward, loaded the cannon, and fired it. Nice firing, said Pete, and I see you've got a peg leg, a hook, and an eye patch. But that beard of yours doesn't hanker for a scratch. It is quite itchy, answered the man, especially during the summer when the weather tends to be sultry. Blow me down, bellowed Pete. Ye don't talk like a pirate. Walk the plank. As the man splashed overboard, Pete hollered, Ye should have said, when the sun's a-blazin', me beard gets the itches, worse than a bucket of sand down me britches. Next, ordered the parrot. Pete squinted at the rest of the rascals, and he said, You got to be stubborn and mighty cranky. You got to be dirty and awfully stanky. You got to load a cannon and know how to fire it. But most of all, you got to talk like a pirate. A rascal stepped forward, loaded the cannon, and fired it. Nice firing, said Beat, and I see that you're plenty dirty and stanky, but is ye stubborn and cranky? Oh, indeed, said the rascal. Sometimes I'm very irritable, especially when I don't get my breakfast. Shiver me timbers, shouted Pete. You don't talk like a pirate. Walk the plank. As the rascal went overboard, Pete cried, Ye should have said, I was as mean as a shark that's stuck in a tub when I've not scarfed me morning grub. Next, swalked the bird. Pete glared at the rascals and said, You got to be fearsome. Why, it's your duty to plunder ship and shore for gleaming booty. You got to load a cannon and know how to fire it. But most of all, you got to talk like a pirate. A rascal stepped forward, loaded the cannon, and fired it. Nice firing, said Pete. And judging by the gold and rubies you're flaunting, I reckon you've done some plundering in your day. That is correct, said the rascal. I've misappropriated a number of fine jewels without permission. Blimey, cried Pete. You don't talk like a pirate. Walk the plank. As the rascal leaped overboard, Pete shouted, Ye should have said, I've pilfered loot on land and at sea, and no man say so has ever stopped me. Next, blared the parrot. Pete shook his head. He had finally lost his patience. He curled up his lip at the last rascal and he declared, Ye gots to trim the sails and mind the deck. Ye gots to be brave in case of shipwreck. Ye gots to load a cannon and know how to fire it. But most of all, you got to talk like a pirate. The rascal walked forward, loaded the cannon, and fired it. 
Nice firing, said Pete, but is ye brave? Cause no lily-livered seafarer is gonna sail with me. I can assure you that I am extremely courageous, said the rascal. I will conduct myself with valor at all times. Confound it, shouted Pete, stomping his foot. Ye don't talk like a pirate. Walk the plank. As the rascal dropped overboard, Pete yelled, Ye should have said, I'm not a yellow-bellied bone from me head to me toes. I'll stand brave upon this ship wherever she goes. Can ye believe it, Pete moaned to his parrot, and all them rascals, not one was fit for me crew. Tis true, squawked the bird. By the powers, there is no more than a bunch of squiffies and sprogs. None of them fit to go a swashbuckling and plundering for pieces of eight upon the pride and blue on this here vessel. Pete blinked. Why, ye talk just like a pirate, he cheered to the bird. You're all the crew I need. Way anchor! Aye, aye, said the parrot, and off they sailed. Back to the high seas went Pete and his bird. A pirate always gets the last word. They looked for a crew so they could hire it, but blimey, none could talk like a pirate. I have one more pirate joke for you. Why is pirating so good? It's because they say once you lose your first hand, you get hooked. The next book I have is Pirate Princess. Princess Bee was not the kind of princess you'd expect. She wasn't proper or refined, her clothes not quite correct. She didn't like to dress in lace or silk, brocade or chintz, and especially she couldn't face a life wed to some prince. Instead, she wished for other things, not fancy or frou-frou. No, Princess Bee felt pirating was just the thing she'd do. But how on earth could Princess B track down a pirate crew? And though she dreamed of salt and sea, her dreams could not come true. Until one day, B strolled down the deck, and as she neared the ship, the sight she saw was quite a shock, a real-life pirate ship. At last I'll bid my throne adieu, B laughed and climbed aboard. She called out, Yo-ho-ho, yoo-hoo, ahoy there, pirate horde! The swarthy crew turned at the sound. They spied her wit on their deck. Avast, they cried and stared and frowned. They grabbed her by the neck. The pirate captain, Jack, glared. Look at her, he barked. Why are ye here? Be curtsied, then asked, Please, kind sir, make me a buccaneer. The crew began to snort and swear. Last get to work, Jack roared. If you don't earn your keep, take care, we'll toss ye overboard. He added, ye will help us sail. I'll do it all, be touted. Jack handed her a mop and pail. Go swab the deck, he shouted. It wasn't her dream pirate job. This mop is gross, griped B. Her shoulders throbbed and yet B sobbed. A pirate's life for me. Soon Weary Bee stopped for a break, but left her bucket out, which proved to be a big mistake when Jack tripped with a shout. The suds dripped down from Jack's dark beard. The crew began to smirk. Jack staggered. Bee shrugged. Jack glared. She volunteered. I'll do some other work. You'll be our cooking wench, Jack cried, so get down to the galley. Aye, aye, Captain B replied, I will not dilly-dally. B prepared a stew in haste. She chopped and stirred and cooked. She was quite sure of its great taste, despite the way it looked. She added squid denticles and salt and an old boot and dried up lemons and stinky fish and more salt and root beer and moldy potatoes and even more salt. The captain took a hearty bite. The mates and swabs did too. They chewed and munched and then went white and spit out their food. Pew! Jack roared, climb to the crow's nest, B. You can't do harm from there. He added, keep watch on the, sa on the sea, but fail and arr, beware. Another chance, cried B. Oh, yes, I'll do that right, you'll see. B climbed as wind blew through her dress. A pirate's life for me. 
The crow's nest swayed with every gust, a gentle rocking motion. Be clutched the mast, and then she just heave hoed into the ocean. The captain yelled, disgusting yak, he ordered, come down now. You've spoiled the food, you've wrecked the deck, we're soiled from stern to prow. Our pirate ship is truly foul, we have but you to thank. The captain's face grew dark, he growled, it's time you walked the plank. Then B was circled by the crew, their swords aimed at her neck. They dragged her past the nasty stew across, across the unswabbed deck. The captain youted, shouted, say your prayers, and B did as she was told. She stepped, then stopped. Then sniffed the air. I think I'm smelling gold. The captain asked her, are ye sure? He glowered in displeasure. But B just smiled back sweet and pure. A princess knows her treasure. They sailed off toward the lonely shore. Through waters crystal clear. B picked a spot, then turned and, and roared. Heave ho, drop anchor here. The crew fought through the leafy trees. They pushed back vines and twigs. At last, B dropped down to her knees and said, Me mates, let's dig. The crew cried, Aye, at B's command. The men rolled up their sleeves. They excavated dirt and sand and rocks and roots and leaves. They tilled and toiled the whole day through. The sun set in the west. B checked the hole and shouted, Ooh, we found a treasure chest. The captain cried, why blow me down? He gaped at all the loot, the gold, the blooms, the ruby crowns, and diamond rings to boot. Ye are a pirate, Jack declared. Ye have a nose for treasure. B stood up tall with shoulders square. She beamed, sir, it's my pleasure. The pirates learned to love B, though the last still couldn't cook. Her swab, the deck skills did not grow. The crew learned not to look. The pirates followed Bee's keen nose across the seven seas, and each day they hollered, We all knows the pirate's life for Bee. My last book today is Dirty Joe the Pirate. But before that, I have one last pirate joke. One day, a sailor and a pirate were sitting down by the dock, and they were talking. And the sailor pointed at the pirate's peg leg, and he said, Ah, what happened there? The pirate said, Ah, I got in a fight with a shark and he lost, I lost my leg. And the sailor nodded and he pointed to the pirate's hook for his hand and he said, Well, what happened there? The pirate said, Ah, I got in a fight with Red Beard's crew and I lost my hand and then I got the hook. And the sailor said, Ah, well, what about the eye patch? What happened there? And the pirate said, ah, well, he hung his head and he said, well, kind of ashamed to say, but a bird pooped in the eye. And the sailor said, well, that shouldn't hurt you that bad. How, how did you lose your eye? And the pirate said, ah, it was my first day with the hook. So now, Dirty Joe the Pirate. Out upon the briny deep, where the wild and wet winds blow, there sailed a cruel and evil man, the pirate Dirty Joe. He sailed upon the scummiest craft that ever left the dock. He roamed the world in seven seas in search of dirty socks. His one good eye surveyed the seas, searching for some ship, and when he spied a boat out there, he'd sneer and lick his lips. All hands on deck, he'd order. There's treasure to be had. He'd shake his one fist in the air and laugh like he were mad. He'd fire a cannon across their bow and board the other craft, then make the crew take off their shoes and with a horrid laugh, he'd tie the sailors up all tight and rob them of their socks, then leave their ship a floundering to run up on the rocks. The socks he took from other ships you'd be surprised to learn. He tied upon his rigging lines that stretched from bow to stern. They flapped and fluttered in the breeze, five hundred little flags. And the smell that those old socks gave off was enough to make you gag. Till one day as he sailed his ship somewhere near Mandalay, his lookout spied another boat beating across the bay. 
Aha, said Joe. We'll get that boat and we'll catch her now, by thunder. For sure as I am dirty Joe, there's socks there we can plunder. The pirates cheered and set the sails to catch up with their prey. They sharpened up their knives and swords. Their boat danced in the spray. But suddenly the cheering stopped. The wind it gave a moan. For on the other ship there flew a flag of skull and bones. From mast to mast, from bow to stern, flying everywhere, there flapped and snapped five hundred pairs of pilfered underwear. Boxers big and boxers small, with stripes and polka dots, and tidy whities hung there too, like the ones your grandpa's got. Lined up on that other deck, armed with swords and knives, was a sight that made the men all shake in fear for their own lives. One hundred pirate women waved their daggers and their swords, and a woman pirate captain yelled, Girls! Let's climb aboard. It's Stinky Annie, someone said, and her band of smelly varmints. She captures every boat she can and takes her undergarments. Then all is lost, another said. We haven't got a chance. You can't be a pirate if you don't have underpants. You lily-livered lumps of lard, lashed out Dirty Joe. What sort of pirates are you, lads? That's what I want to know. We'll show them. We'll take their ship. We'll tie them up, he roared. We'll take their socks and sneakers, too, and throw them overboard. The pirates there with Dirty Joe screamed and cheered and yelled. Someone blew a whistle and someone rang the bell. As the boats drew near, the pirates all cursed and muttered, while a thousand pairs of underwear and socks all flapped and fluttered. As the ships came closer still, Joe's men all could see that Stinky Annie was as scary looking as could be. Her mouth was twisted in a sneer, one arm was but a hook, and when, with her one good evil eye she gave a withering look. Finally the two ships met, and on the waves they rocked. Get them now, boys, Joe cried out. Take off all their socks. But even as the men attacked the women waiting there, Stinky Ann, Stinky Ann called to her crew, Girls, get their underwear. It was an awful battle, a loud and raucous fray. At first it seemed that Dirty Joe would win and have his way, till Joe's first mate noticed that Stinky Annie's crew all were fighting barefoot. They had no socks or shoes. What's the point, a man cried out. Why make all this fuss? If we can't get their dirty socks, what's in it for us? No, screamed Joe, don't give up now, but he spoke the words too late, and Stinky Annie and her crew quickly sealed their fate. Stinky Annie came aboard and cornered Dirty Joe. She said, I want your boxers now, in case you didn't know. Then Dirty Joe looked up and said, before you have your fun, your face looks quite familiar. You remind me of someone. Stinky Annie lowered her sword. They peered at one another. Wait, she said. I see it now. You're Joey, my little brother. That's right, said Joe. Your sister Anne, you bounced me on your knee. Put down your sword and give up this fight. Please don't do this to me. Stinky Annie gave a smile. A tear came to her eye. All her crew looked on in awe. They'd never seen her cry. Little Joey, how are you? She asked. How have you been? I'm just fine, dear sister Anne, he said and gave a grin. Good, said Annie, that's great news, her one eye shone and danced. Now do just what I say, you squirt, I want your underpants. But Annie, you're my sister, Joe blubbered Annie whined. Stow it, Joey, Annie said. I haven't got the time. Just because I'm your sister, it doesn't mean I care. I'm a pirate, that's me job, I want your underwear. So Dirty Joe surrendered and did what his sister said. And when he did, it's safe to say, more than his face was red. Stinky Annie sailed away and still she roams the seas with her brother's boxers high above flapping in the breeze. And Dirty Joe, he sailed home close to the Bay of Fundy. He's not a pirate anymore because he has no undies. Ooh.